In this video, I'm sharing 11 fine motor activities for toddlers. These activities are fun, take only minutes to set up, and can be done right from your home. So if you wanna check them out, then stay tuned. Before we get into the video, I just wanna quickly introduce myself if you're new here. My name is Jess, and I'm a former early childhood teacher turned work from home mom of almost two. I am super passionate about helping moms of little ones navigate the world of early motherhood. Here you'll find videos on pregnancy, parenting, and educational activities for young children. I would love for you to join our YouTube family by clicking the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you never miss an upload. So fine motor skills are the ability to manipulate the smaller muscle groups in the body. In this video, we are specifically referring to the muscles in hands, wrists, and fingers. Fine motor skills allow us to do things like write, zip, button, tie shoes, use utensils, turn pages, hold small objects, cut with scissors, and so much more. These activities are great for toddlers starting around 18 months and can be done with preschoolers all the way up to three or four years of age. My son is 20 months right now and he could do most of these activities. If your child isn't interested in an activity, just try it again at another time when they're a little older. Also, it's really important to remember that every child grows and develops at their own pace, so take the recommended age ranges lightly. If you haven't seen my fine motor activities series for babies and toddlers, you may wanna check those out first before trying these activities. I will link those videos down in the description box below. Our first activity is window washing. This is so easy and fun. For materials, all you're gonna need is some kind of cloth and a spray bottle with water. You can simply show your child how to spray the windows and then wipe to clean them. Ironically, your windows will probably be dirtier after this activity, but it's great for strengthening hand and finger muscles. Your child has to use their hand to manipulate the trigger of the spray bottle. So this is like a little hand and finger workout for them. I absolutely love incorporating spray bottles into activities. They are so fun, not only because they incorporate a little bit of water play, but because they give such a great workout for little hands. So my son Luke definitely enjoyed this one. He loves to clean things, so it was super cute. And as soon as I told him we were gonna clean the windows, he ran right over and loved using the spray bottle. Next up, we have pool noodle lacing. So again, super simple. You're just gonna cut up a pool noodle and then gather some kind of string or rope. I like to use something a little bit thicker, so just make sure that it's thin enough to go through the hole of the pool noodle, but thick enough that it's a little more rigid so that it doesn't move and it's easier for your child to get the noodles on, especially if they're a little younger. But if they're older and they have a little more fine motor control, then feel free to use like something like a piece of yarn or something that will be much harder for them to manipulate onto the pool noodles. You simply have your child lace the pool noodle pieces onto the string of a rope. This activity is really great for fine motor skills and hand-eye coordination. When doing these activities, take note of how your child is problem solving and what kind of strategies they're using to complete these activities. So while doing this one, I noticed that Luke was sticking his finger through the hole of the pool noodle to feel the rope on the other side and then pull it through. So I thought that was really cool strategy that he used and something that was really fun to watch. This next activity is a little more advanced. Luke wasn't quite able to do this yet, so I'm just demonstrating in this video. I gathered some clothespins. I had multiple sizes, but if you have only one size, that's completely fine. You can get some kind of wire basket. I have a ton of these plastic ones from Dollar Tree and then just flip it over and clip the pins onto the basket. This is really great for your child's pincer grasp, which is using their pointer and thumb to pick up or manipulate objects. Like I said, it does take a little more strength, so I do definitely recommend this for older toddlers or preschoolers. But definitely give it a try with your child and see how it works out. Dot sticker color matching is super great. I love that there is a cognitive component in there for matching the dots to the correct colored circles. All you're gonna need is some color dot stickers, which you can either grab at like the dollar store or I always get mine in big packs on Amazon. I will link the ones I get down below. And then you're gonna need either some dot markers or just regular markers. Whatever you choose, they just need to be in the matching colors of the dot stickers that you're using. You're also gonna need a piece of white paper. You're either gonna use the dot markers or regular markers to draw or stamp circles to match the dot stickers. 
and then simply have your child match the dot stickers to the same colored circles. This activity is awesome for hand-eye coordination as your child works to place the sticker directly on the matching colored circle. So when working with these stickers, there's a couple different ways that you can tackle this with your child. You can either remove the backing of the stickers if you wanna just hand over the sticker sheet to them and let them go ahead and pick the stickers off and place them on the paper. This would be a bit more of an advanced strategy. What I did with Luke is I just picked off the stickers myself and then handed them to him. So he just did them one at a time. So if you're just starting out or if you have a toddler on the younger side, I would recommend just peeling off the stickers, handing them to them and letting them put them on the paper. But you do whatever works for you and your child. I love this pasta straw activity. All you need for this is rigatoni. You can use penne too, but I like rigatoni because it has the largest hole in the pasta and it's nice and straight, so it's easy to work with. And then you're gonna need some kind of straws and Play-Doh. So all you're gonna do is use the Play-Doh as a base, and then you're going to stick the straws in the Play-Doh standing straight up. I chose to do four, you could do as many or as little as you want for this activity. And then you're going to have your child place the pasta on the straws. I recommend starting with straight straws versus bendy straws. All I had was bendy straws, but they do definitely give an extra challenge if your child bumps into them and they start to bend. No! If your child does need a little more of a challenge, you can have them bend the straw and then string the pasta on and have to kind of manipulate it to fit on there. But when starting out, I definitely recommend straight straws because it will be a little easier. But Luke definitely enjoyed this activity. Our next activity is a muffin tin pom-pom sort. So for this, you're going to need a muffin tin, some small pom-poms, colored circle cutouts to match the pom-poms, and then a small bowl or container. You're gonna place the colored circle cutouts in the bottom of the muffin tin, and then you're gonna simply have your child sort the pom-poms by color. I would definitely recommend using smaller pom-poms for this, especially if your child is using their fingers, because that will add a greater challenge. The smaller the pom-pom, the more precise they'll be using their fine motor skills to pick them up. If your child needs a greater challenge, you can have them use large plastic tweezers, which are also great. So they'll have to take the tweezer, try and squeeze the pom-pom, pick it up, and then put it in the bowl or container, whatever you're working with. I did actually try and use Luke's little plastic tongs from his grill. I do have the large plastic tweezers, but I still think they're a little too hard for Luke to manipulate the little plastic Plastic tongs for the grill are a lot easier, but this is still a little too advanced for him right now. If you are gonna try the tweezers, you can go for a little bit of a larger pom-pom. That might be a little easier. I didn't even do that, so that was really, really hard for him. We'll wait and try that at another time, but he loved the color sorting. And again, it was so awesome to see his strategy because once he found a color, he started kind of picking out that same color from the bowl, which was really interesting to see. Good job. Good job. Good job. So just little things like that that you're picking up on is that cognitive development that's taking place in your child's brain and it's so so interesting to watch. I don't know. I'm like super nerd when it comes to that stuff. But anyway, if your child's older, you can also modify this activity by instead of colors at the bottom, you can place numbers at the bottom of the muffin tin. So then they can put that many pom-poms in each compartment. So that's an option as well. By the way, if you're looking for more fine motor activities for toddlers, definitely check out my Tiny Tots Toddler Curriculum Units. They are themed units filled with play-based developmental activities for children ages 18 months to three years old. So I will leave a link below in the description box if you'd like more information about that as well. Also, if you're finding these activities helpful so far, then please give that thumbs up button a quick click to let me know. I loved how simple these activities were and this one is simple as well. All you need is a cardboard tube and some rubber bands. So you're just gonna go ahead and place several rubber bands on the cardboard tube and have your child go ahead and pick them off. This is awesome for their pincer grasp. Like I said, that grip with their pointer and thumb. Luke was really concentrating on this activity and it was super fun to watch him as he 
really used his fingers to pick the rubber bands off of the tube. For our next activity, you're going to need a colander and some pipe cleaners. Simply have your child thread the pipe cleaners through the holes of the colander. At first, he was only trying to put the pipe cleaners in at the top of the colander, but then I showed him that he can also slide them in the sides and he really liked doing that as well. So for me personally, I like to model these activities in the beginning and then kind of sit back and watch Luke and see how he does the activity. There's nothing wrong with showing them a different strategy. And of course, like if they're struggling or having trouble or seeming frustrated, don't be afraid to either step in or cut the activity off completely. There's definitely been times where I'm doing an activity with Luke and he starts to get frustrated and we just like stop the activity. You know as the parent what's best for your child. So don't be afraid to do that as well. Next up, we have a really simple pom-pom whisk activity. So you're just gonna need a kitchen kitchen whisk and some small pom-poms. You fill the whisk with the pom-poms and then have your child use their fingers to pick out the pom-poms and then place them into some kind of bowl or container. You can also turn this into a color sorting activity by using colored pieces of paper as sorting mats or different colored bowls if you like. But I just had Luke go ahead and pick them out with his fingers and place them into a bowl. At one point he was kind of like banging the whisk on the floor and he noticed that some were coming out. But for the fine motor aspect, you really wanna encourage them to use their fingers. But again, don't be afraid to just let them explore and do what they wanna do. For our next activity, we have a little bit of some fun water play. So you're gonna need at least two bins filled with a little bit of water. I did this in our Ikea flea set table. I absolutely love this sensory table and highly, highly recommend it. I will leave a link to it in the description box below, but you're able to use the different size Ikea Trofast bins, I believe. So I did two small ones and a large one for this. Optionally, you can use food coloring for this activity as well. You're also gonna need some kind of dropper or pipette or turkey baster. So you're just gonna show your child how to transfer water from one bin to the next. We decided to make this a color mixing activity. So I did one bin yellow, one bin red, and one bin blue. My husband Mike took a clear cup just so that we could show Luke the color mixing better. And we showed him what happens when you mix the different colors. And he was super into it. Ooh. Your child using the dropper, turkey baster, pipette, whatever you choose to use to squeeze and then transfer the water. They're getting that squeezing motion, which is again, working those little hand and finger muscles. Another way to use those pool noodles that we used from the lacing activity that I mentioned earlier in the video is to line them up on the floor or a table and place some small pom-poms in the holes of the pool noodles. So this activity is gonna help with hand-eye coordination and the pincer grasp and overall fine motor skills as your child works to manipulate that small pom-pom and get it in the hole of the pool noodle. Go check out my fine motor activity series if you haven't already and definitely check out my Tiny Tots toddler curriculum for some super fun developmental activities for your toddler or preschooler. If you found this video helpful, then please give that thumbs up button a click and drop your favorite activity below in the comments or if you have another fun fine motor activity for toddlers, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not already. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you next time.